So friends, that is Canal Street right down there, the famous Canal Street. You can see they still have trolley cars here. This is St. Charles. And the story is that, that uh, Elvis and June were driving and they were, they were still back in uh, Biloxi and they heard on the radio a DJ saying that he wanted to interview June because it was talk that they were gonna get married. So he said, okay, well, if they want to interview you, let's go give them an interview. So they drove straight from Biloxi to here, went to St. Charles Hotel, went up into the mezzanine, and actually he called them to find out what the address was, and came here and kept going around the block. You can see this is a one-way street going this way. And he kept going around the block trying to find somewhere to park, couldn't find anywhere to park, and finally just said, heck it which is a call back to Adam the Woo, my buddy, and parked right here and just double parked and went in and did an interview. So we're gonna go in and see if we can go upstairs and see where it happened at in the mezzanine. Stay tuned. Sadly, friends, this was not the actual St. Charles Hotel. This is where it was, where that tall building is at on St. Charles. On the other side of the street further down is the spot of this original St. Charles Hotel. This is what it looked like. You can imagine Elvis double parking out front. That's where it happened at, not at the new St. Charles Hotel. This building sadly was demolished in 1974 and we did not know it till now. Another piece gone. So in the mezzanine here, which is the second floor part that you see above the entrance right there, just below the American flag, is where the radio show was. I found the actual interview from that day, from that radio show, and I'm gonna play it for you right now. Check this out. I've been getting some pretty bad publicity lately, especially after the Milton Burrow show. I got quite a bit of bad publicity by my actions on the stage out there, but... Uh... Well, i tell you one thing, Elvis Presley, uh... We have 50,000 watts, and they're very strong here in the New Orleans area, and you'll never hear anything uh, other than Elvis Presley is a very fine person here. And I can speak in behalf of Larry Monroe and Hal Murray and uh, Jim Edwards on the night train and Mickey Scott and all the personnel here who have talked with you. We have been uh, playing your records for a long time. Well, thank you very much. I've been listening to your, uh, to, your, to your station for the past couple of days ever since I've been down here. And uh, I can say that, and I certainly appreciate it a lot because uh, uh, if if there wasn't somebody on my side, I'd I'd, I'd be lost. <laughs> you know. Well, I find I have a, a little um, little note here. Ellery Wagner is the new president for the New Orleans fan club for Elvis Presley. I take it. Uh, have you met? Is it a young man? Is it Ellery? Or oh, it's a girl. I see. Uh, have you met uh, Miss Wagner? I don't believe I have. Uh, if I did, it was a long time ago, and I forgot it. Back when I, you know, I was in New Orleans when I first started out in the business. Oh, you were in New Orleans? Yes, I was at Pontchartrain Beach. And uh, <clears throat> that's back when I first started out. And I've, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been around quite a bit since then. I've met so many people until it's hard to remember. Well, I heard the like, Democratic Party is trying to buy, uh, buy the uh, Elvis Presley block of votes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. Well, I'm, I'm afraid that the big, the the the, uh, the biggest part of them would be kind of too young to vote. You know? <laughs> well, I want to ask you one other thing. I was reading uh, one of the trade magazines. Uh, you made the statement, uh, whether or not you made it or not, we'll find out. Uh, that I want to make it while I'm hot. Uh, in reference to a, I mentioned earlier, this jockey who said he would pay you a dollar a minute. Uh, for every minute you, he interviewed you on the air. And I, Elvis, don't, please don't hold me to that because I had to sell the station. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the most untrue rumors I've heard yet. Uh, I've never, I've, I've never even, in fact, it's the first time I've even thought of anything like that when you mentioned it. But I think it's a good idea, so. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people that, that possibly don't like it, you know? And uh, there are a number of people who don't like me, and uh, probably Bob Hope right down the line, but. What you do, you do well, so uh, I don't know why people, uh, it's just a, a certain amount of integrity that should go with this, like these quotes here and there that you read about you, now that you yeah. say there's no truth to them. Mr. Right? Stewart, I'll, I'll tell you like this, uh, I was telling the reporter a little earlier today, uh, there's people, regardless of who you are and what you do, there's going to be people that don't like you. There were people that didn't like Jesus Christ, they, they killed him, and Jesus Christ was a perfect man, you know, and uh, 
there's going to be people that don't like you regardless of who you are and what you do because if everybody thought the same way, they'd be driving the same car, they'd be marrying the same woman, and that wouldn't work out. You know? That's right. A lot of philosophy there. Very, very much so. Well, uh, how about your new release? I've got a million calls. I know that Mickey and Larry Monroe and Hal Murray and Jim Edwards have all received the same call. Why don't you play Hound Dog? And uh, we can't find it. <laughs> well, I, it's probably because I haven't made it yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hound Dog uh, should be out in the next three or four weeks. Now, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I've got it to record yet. But I mean, after you record it, it'll take them just a week or two to get it out. Well, Ellis, do you think there's any chance that you might uh, send us an exclusive on it? I'll see if I can. I'll see if I get my manager to send you a one of the first copies that comes oh, out. Oh, we'd appreciate that, and we'll play it to the old dog's tongues hanging. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and do you write most of the lyrics for your tunes? Uh, no, I, I, I've never written a song. Never I've, written a song? I've never written a song. Well, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I was like some of my uh, rivals, Carl Perkins and Gene Benson. Those guys, they're, they're pretty good songwriters, but me, I, I did good to get out of high school, you know. <laughs> and well, I've Elvis... never written a song. Well, you don't need, you just keep singing. But uh, tell me one thing else. How long do you plan to be in Biloxi? Are you going back to Biloxi now? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to uh, to uh, Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida? Yes. Sir. Are you booked down there? No, I'm, I'm on vacation. I, I'm off for about three weeks. It's the first vacation I've had since I've been in the business. I see. I'm, well, I've been in the business about 43 years now. I <laughs> <laughs> see. Energy he uses, eating sugar, take box candy, take half box candy. What does that mean? Oh, sugar, eight, half box, oh, Elvis, did you eat up that box of candy I gave you? <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, one piece. Well, it was it was very good candy. I, <laughs> I, I saw the price tag on the bottom of it, you know, 98 cents, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I stole it. <laughs> no, it, 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 was, it, it was very good candy. I didn't know who it belonged to, it was just sitting in front of him and I was eating it. I see. Well, uh, <laughs> he's sitting in front of him. Well, I'd like to play an Elvis uh, Presley tune here. Uh, Who? Gene Vincent? Gene Vincent. <laughs> this boy is coming on. But, uh, I met Gene in New York. I, uh, uh, I met him last week. He was in the train station up there. I was, I was going to New York, I mean, from New York to Memphis. And Gene Vincent was in the train station. And, uh, I didn't know who he was. One of the boys in my band knew him. And I walked over and introduced myself to him, and uh, it's the first time I had ever seen him. Or, or he had seen me on shows, but he had never, you know, I had never met him. And uh, I told him, I, I said, Gene, I said, congratulations on your record. I said, you really got a hit. And right immediately, he, the first thing he said was, well, I wasn't trying to copy you. He said, <laughs> he said I wasn't trying to sound like you. I mean, just right off of the bat, he said that, so without be, even being asked. Yeah. And uh, I told him, I said, oh, I know that. I said, that's just your natural style. <laughs> But uh, but the boy has got out a, a very good record, and I mean, I have people ask me all the time what I think about these people that that, that sound a lot like me. I mean, uh, well, I, I was uh, I was the first one to come out with it. I reckon is is best I, uh, is, as far as I can remember. But uh, uh, those people they're are, uh, they're using the style. I, I don't blame them. I'd probably jump on the bandwagon too. You know. Cool. Well, one last question. Uh, how long do you think that uh, rock and roll will last now? Would you think that it's... Well, I wish I knew. That's a question that if I, if, if I could answer, I'd be making plans for the future, but I don't know. I'll say this. It's, it, it's, it's very hot now. I like it. I enjoy rock and roll. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. But uh, as long as it lasts, as long as it sells, I'll continue doing it, as long as that's what the people want. And if they change, if it dies out, I'll try to do something else. And if that doesn't work, I'll just say, well, I had my day. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.